Okay, so yan. So, welcome to the second part of your subject, the organic chemistry part na. No? Okay, so anyway, before we start pala, you can actually watch my organic class talaga, no? Sa playlist natin yung sa YouTube, kung nakikita nyo yung ano, org chem, yun, pure organic chemistry yung tinuturo ko doon, no? Do, ano yun, in-depth talaga yun. Do sa case natin, medyo light lang tayo. Medyo surface level lang yung i-discuss natin, no? Kasi yung organic chemistry, medyo malawak talaga yan. So, sa purpose ng class natin, sisimplihan lang muna natin, no? Kasi limited yung time natin, eh. Okay? So, anyway, so welcome to the second part of your class, the organic chemistry. Ang gagawin natin ngayon ay mag introduction lang tayo, no? So, we will recall the basic concepts at how come na nagkaroon ng organic chemistry. Pero, before tayo mag-proceed doon, ano ba muna yung organic chemistry, no? Oh, maliit lang yung font. Download nyo na lang yung PDF, no? So, organic chemistry is the study of compounds of carbon. Okay? So, any compounds na may carbon could be considered an organic compound, no? Carbon and hydrogen, no? So, sila-sila yung mga magkakasama na compounds that makes up the organic compounds, no? And why they, why they are called organic? Because according to them, they are usually found in nature, especially sa biological species, no? Sa mga living things, no? So, yun, organic chemistry ay study ng organic compounds, which is focused on the carbon atoms, no? So, ano yung mga inaaral natin dito? Ano yung mga kasama ng carbon? So, carbon is usually bonded with hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, no? And the combination of these atoms can form different substances, no? That makes up our body, no? Yung mga proteins natin, our DNA, no? Our, well, lahat na, ng bagay na meron tayo sa living things, no? Yun, puro organic compounds tayo dyan, no? So, yun. Sometimes, there are also atoms na iba, no, na nalalagay sa ating organic compounds such as sulfur, phosphorus, halogens, no, so yan. So, sometimes dumadagdag sila sa combination ng hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen in making up organic compound, no. So, for example, kapag yung organic compound sa hair natin may sulfur, at nag-form yan ng disulfide linkage, no, Mag magkocurl yung hair nyo, may kulot yan. Pero kapag nawala yung disulfide linkage, nawala yung sulfur-sulfur bond, no? hindi yan magka-curl, no? So, yan. That's organic chemistry. Itong phosphorus naman, for example, sa inyong adenosine triphosphate, no? So, yung phosphate, ayun, may phosphorus yun. So, yun ay mga organic phosphate sa katawan that keeps, up, keeps us energetic, no? So, yan. Halogen, ito yung mga, ano, hi, ano, nasa group 7, no? So, they are also essential in maintaining homeostasis and sometimes sa metabolism natin, kailangan din sila, no? Such as iodine, no? Sa mga thyroid glands natin, no? Sa, tumutulong sila sa hormones and stuff, no? Okay? So, yun. So, medyo marami tayong organic, ano, compounds, no? Up to, uh, up to this date, no, we are still discovering more organic compounds kasi, you know, ang dami naman talagang substances that makes up a person or a living thing, no. So, yun, so far, they have discovered 10 million organic compounds, no. And each year, about 100,000 yung nadadagdag sa ating library no organic compounds, no. So, yun. So, medyo malawak talaga yung study of organic compounds, no. And, with that, no, with the idea of organic compounds, we can link those ano, concepts sa biochemistry. No? So, what is the biochemistry? Ano ba yung biochemistry? Biochemistry is the study of ano, the chemical aspect ng life. No? So, kung baga, explain mo bakit kumukulot yung buhok, bakit may proteins, no? bakit yung ating blood kailangan may certain pH lang. No? So, yun. All those stuff has something to do with organic chemistry. No? Kaya, yun. So, yung organic chemistry, this is the bridge ng chemistry into applied sciences. No? Such as your field, no? yung medical technology. 
parang ito yung bridge ng conceptual chemistry no papunta sa applied field like you no so yun may explain nyo with organic chemistry yung blood bakit siya ganun ano yung sickle cell ano disease no so aning ano reasons non chemically no so yun malalaman niyo yun when you uh, when nakapag biochemistry na kaya no pero for now org chem muna tayo okay so before the idea of org chem punta muna tayo sa lumang panahon na so in the early 19th century around 18 something no so wala pang organic chemistry that time bakit no kasi ito yung pinapaniwalaan nila the concept of vitalism So what is a vitalism? Ang sabi nila, ng mga lumang tao, wala pa kasing org chem dati. So naniniwala sila sa vitalism. So ano sabi nila dito? The vitalism is the belief that organic compounds can be made with the aid of mysterious vital force, no? So ibig sabihin daw, in creating organic substances, you cannot do it in laboratories, no? Hindi ka daw pwedeng magawa ng organic substance sa lab. Kundi kailangan may mahiwagang puwersa na tutulong sa atin in synthesizing organic compounds, no? We call that the vital force, no? The theory is vitalism, no? So well, let's ano, let's think for example, no? Kunara, you're going to create glucose, no? Gagawa ka ng sugar. So in creating sugar, ito yung isang reaction, 'di ba? CO2, H2O, C6H12O6, O2. Ito yung photosynthesis reaction, 'di ba? Ano mapapansin natin? Bio, ano, mga living organisms, they can do this without ano, without effort masyado, no? Kasi ganito yung ginagawa ng plant natin, no? So the plants in the chloroplast, no? combines carbon dioxide and water to form sugars no kaya, kaya nga may plants tayo no kaya sila nabubuhay because of this photosynthesis reaction kung mapapansin natin organic substances such as plants can do that easily pero try nating gawin yan sa lab no uh, kunari ito may tubig ka tapos bugahan mo yan kasi may CO2 yung hangin mo di ba pag binugahan mo ng binugahan yung tubig may ma-form ka bang glucose wala, di ba? Kadiri lang yung tubig na mangyayari doon kasi binubugahan mo yun, no? So, kumbaga, yun yung idea nila, no? That in creating organic substances, hindi mo siya magagawa on your own lang. Kailangan may vital force, no? Merong special force na tutulong sa iyo in creating those substances, no? Pero, there was a chemist, no? A German chemist who tested this idea, no? So, sabi niya, hindi ako naniniwala, no? Na kailangan, ayun ang nangyari. <laughs> hindi siya naniniwala na kailangan daw ng vital force in creating organic substances, no? So, sabi niya, ay, yung reaction na yan, pwede rin niyang gawin in another method, no? Pwede yan magawa ng paraan to create uh, glucose out of this stuff, no? Pwede daw, no? Sino yon? So that chemist was Friedrich Wohler, no. So siya Friedrich Wohler, Wohler, kaya bahala mag-pronounce, no. Pero W's are pronounced as V's in German, no. So ayan si Friedrich Wohler, no. So ano yung ginawa ni Friedrich Wohler, no? Sabi niya, uh, hindi daw siya naniniwala sa concept of vitalism that organic compounds can be created with vital forces, no. Hindi daw ganoon. Pwede daw tayo makagawa ng organic compounds even without the vital force, no? So, paano niya na-discover yan, no? So, Friedrich Wohler was actually investigating on this reaction. So, you have your ammonium cyanate, no? Which is an inorganic compound. It is an inorganic salt found in crystals, no? Sa mga minerals, inorganic compound yan. Pero, nung nag-apply siya ng heat, no? The ammonium cyanate converted into urea. So what is the urea? Ito yung component sa ating urine, no? That is a byproduct of the biological processes in our body, no? So isa yan sa mga product when we create proteins, no? May lumalabas na urea. So kaya may urea yung ating mga urine, no? So yun, so nagtaka siya. Sabi niya, how come that... I was able, no, sabi niya, sabi ni Friedrich, no, paano daw siya nakagawa ng organic compound from an inorganic compound? So, napaisip siya. 
Since nakagawa siya ng organic compound without the vital force, then dapat hindi hindi ito paniwalaan, no? So yun yung sabi niya, no? Sabi ni Friedrich, since I am able to create an organic compound from inorganic substances, no, which are found in minerals, no. So since nakagawa siya niyan, sabi niya, hindi totoo yung vitalism. Kumbaga bogus-bogus lang 'yan, no. Mga funny concept lang daw 'yan. So yun yung naging start na hindi na sila naniwala sa vitalism, no. And that actually is the start then na nagkaroon na tayo ng organic chemistry, no. So later on, many chemists, no, were able to discover methods in creating organic compounds from inorganic sources, no. Kaya until now, na experience natin yan, no. So for example, sa natin na kita yung organic chemistry, so we uh, we can actually create plastics, no, out of inorganic substances, no. Ano pa? Sa gasolina natin, no? our gasolines no? are produced from the remains of the old dinosaurs. No? Yung mga coal, uh, I mean yung mga, ano tawag doon? Basta yung nasa ilalim ng earth. No? So yung mga petroleum stuff na yon, so ina-extract nila yon to create organic substances which we can use in cooking oils, no? in making plastics, in making asphalts, in making gasolines, no? or petroleum jelly, waxes, no? So, lahat ng mga yon ay mga produkto by the time na na-debunk ang vitalism, no? Kasi sabi nila, especially Friedrich Wuller, sabi niya, you can create organic stuff out of inorganic stuff, no? So, since nawala na yung notion ng vitalism, mas lalo na dumami yung discovery ng ating mga organic substances, no? And the field that specializes in those topics, no? In those creations is the organic chemistry, no? So, yun lang yung brief history niya, no? So, kumbaga, naniwala, naniwala sila sa misteryo na hindi naman nag exist at all. No? So, parang yun lang yung idea ng org chem, no? So, ngayon, um, yung org chemistry, no, medyo maraming drawing tayong kailangan gawin dito. So, number one, kailangan alam na natin yung Lewis structures. No? Kasi Lewis structure plays a vital role in organic chemistry. No? So, in organic chemistry kasi we have to draw the molecules, no, the entirety of the molecule para dun tayo mag-react-react. No? Okay, so anyway, punta tayo dito. Structural theory of matter, no? So, ito yung mga precursor ng Lewis structure, no? So, anyway. So, sabi nila, paano kaya nabubuo yung substances, no? Such as the organic compounds, no? So, according to the structural theory of matter, no? Kumbaga, ang idea is that the atoms have a default connectivity. Uh, default possible connectivity, no? So, kumbaga, pwede siya kumonekta into certain number of atoms by default, no? So, yun yung concept ng structural theory of matter, no? So, by connecting different atoms, no? You can create different molecules, no? For example, let's have this compound here. We have dimethyl ether and ethanol, no? So what can we observe here is that they have the same chemical no? So we have C2H6O. No? So we have the same formula. However, we have different connectivities. No? So yun yung idea lang ng structural theory of matter. No? Na yung atoms natin, they can create different, ano, different versions of itself depending on which atom is connected to what. No? Parang ganun. So, kumbaga, ito yung isang version ng formula na to. Ito yung isang version ng formula na to. No? Since they have the same formula but different characteristics, no? magkaiba sila ng properties, we call them isomers. No? So, yun. Dito na po mapasok yung idea ng isomers natin. So, compounds can be connected in different ways, no? But if they have the same formula, we call them isomers, no? Okay, so yun lang yung idea. So compound with the same molecular formula, but different structures are constitutional isomers, no? So ano ba yung ano, connectivity ng atoms by default, no? So the connectivity of atoms by default is presented by this table, no? 
So we say that carbon is usually tetravalent. So that means carbon can connect to four different groups. No? Pwede siya makumonekta dito sa isang group na yan, dito, dito, and dito. No? So yan. Kumbaga sa Lewis dot symbol, mga dot iyang lines na yan. No? So may isang dot dyan, isang dot, isang dot, isang dot. No? So since we have four single dots for carbon, then we call it tetravalent. No? Apat yung pwedeng kumaget, kumabit sa valence electrons niya. Tetravalent. No? So ito na yung default na connectivity ng carbon natin. So pwede siya dumugtong sa apat usually. No? Uh, next one, trivalent. No? So trivalent, for example, the group 5 atoms such as nitrogen. Uh, trivalent yan. Bakit? No? Remember, your Lewis dot symbol for nitrogen is... Ganito, di ba? So, kung mapapansin nyo, you have a pair of electrons there. We call them the lone pairs, di ba? Lone pairs are not used in bonding to different atoms. No? Hindi sila ginagamit in chemical bonding. So, yung mga single dot yung ginagamit for bonding. So, we can see that nitrogen can form three bonds with other atoms. No? So, saan yun? Ito, ito, at ayun. So, since tatlo yung bonds na pwede niya gawin, we call it trivalent. No? So, tatlong bonds yung pwede niyang gawin. For group 6 atoms naman, such as oxygen, we call them divalent. No? So, usually, they bond to do... To do uh, I mean, nab nabubula lang. <laughs> they can bond to two different atoms. No? So, bakit? No? So, if you could still recall the Lewis dot symbol for oxygen, no? Anim na electrons yan, four of which are paired, no? So, yan. So, ito yung mga lone pairs natin, lone pairs, no? And we have the single dots here, which can be used in bonding, no? So, yan. That's why we call the group six atoms, such as oxygen, divalent, no? Kasi dalawa yung pwedeng dugtungan. The lone pairs cannot be used uh, to connect the atoms, no? Sa ngayon, no? So, yan. And next one is the monovalent. No? So, from the word monovalent, meaning nun ay isa lang yung pwedeng dumugtong sa kanila. No? Because may isang unpaired electron no? na pwede dugtungan. So, for example, the hydrogen, if we draw the Lewis dot symbol, that's H dot. No? Ito, single dot yan. So, that can connect with the other dot ng isa pang atom no? to form a bond. No? So, isang elektron yan, dudugtong yan sa isa pang elektron ng kabilang atom to create a bond. No? So, isa lang yung pwede niya magawang bond. No? So, that's why it's monovalent. No? Yung X naman, X is our halides. No? So, yung mga group 7 atoms, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. No? So, sila sila yung mga monovalent pa. No? Bakit? No? For halides, such as fluorine, we have 7 valence electrons. No? Three of which are, uh, six of which are paired, no, in two by twos, no. So yun na pair yung anim na electrons, so yun yung mga lone pair natin. Then we are left with one lonely electron, no, one single electron that can be used to create bond, no. So kaya yun monovalent, no. So yun, so yun lang yung idea ng ano, structural theory of matter. Ano yung concept niya? That atoms can connect to different atoms by default, no, with a certain number of uh, valency, no. So, pwede siya lang kum kumonekta into four groups, no, into four atoms. Pwede sila kumonekta into three atoms. Pwede sa dalawang atom or isang atom lang yung pwede nila dugtungan, no. So, we call that the valency, no. So, tetravalency carbon kasi may apat siyang uh, single electrons, no. Trivalent yung group five, no. Kasi may tatlo siyang single electrons. One is the lone pair. Okay. Um, meron tayong divalent for group 6. No? So usually they form two bonds. No? And monovalent, uh, single bond lang yung mga kaya nilang gawin. No? Okay. So that's the structural theory of matter. No? And when we connect different atoms, no, makagawa tayo ng mga isomers nga. No? So for example, etong dalawa na. No? So, mapansin natin, their valency is retained, no? 
So let's take a look here. No? So this is carbon that is connected to four different groups. No? Itong carbon na to, this is connected to four different groups. This carbon is connected to four different groups, same as this one. No? So kung mapapansin nyo, yung valency, retained siya. No? So ganun. So retained yung connectivity. Apat yung pwede gawin ni carbon. Si hydrogen, retained din ba yung connectivity? Despite magkaibang substances to? Yes, no? So as you can see, this hydrogen atom is singly connected to one atom only. No? So lahat ng mga yan. Same as this one. Yung oxygen, this is connected into two different atoms. No? Yung nasa left at yung nasa right. No? So yan. So maintained yung valency nila. No? So connected yung isa dito, yung isa connected doon. No? Ito connected dito. Sa carbon, ito connected sa hydrogen. No? So, kumbaga, sa organic chemistry, ang pinaka-concept na lang na kailangan natin alamin is itong valency, which is familiar na tayo dapat kasi nag structure na tayo. No? Okay. So, ang gagawin lang natin is gagawa tayo ng mga possible ways to connect different atoms so we can create isomers. No? Okay. So, ano yung uli mga isomers? There are... Substances with the same formula, but they differ in structure. No? Such as this one, in carbon, yung oxygen connected sa dalawang carbon. So, ibang structure yon. Carbon is connected to oxygen, the same oxygen connected to hydrogen. Ibang structure yon. No? So, we call them isomers. No? So, yun lang yung concept ng uh, structural theory of matter. No? By default, may normal number of connectivity sila. No? Tapos yung mga connectivity na yun, pwede kang makagawa ng different uh, versions of it. No? Mga iba't ibang variation ng molecules, we call them isomers. Okay, so in organic chemistry, we represent our molecules no, with the following um, methods. No? So ito yung mga ways of representing molecules in organic chemistry. We can represent them with Lewis structures. No? So, ito yung Lewis structure. Ano yung nakikita natin dyan? That all atoms are shown, even the bonds. No? So, makikita natin lahat ng atoms at lahat ng bonds, including the lone pairs. No? So, kumbaga, the Lewis structure is the more complete version ng drawing ng isang molecule. However, pag lumalaki yung molecule natin, it would be quite um, time-consuming, no? Medyo mauubos yung oras mo in drawing this structure. So, anong ginagawa natin? Sometimes we condense the formula, no? So, we condense the Lewis structure in such way yung hydrogens na nakakabit kay carbon, hindi na natin pinapakita yung bond, no? Ginagawa na lang natin silang ganito. Okay? Yung mga CH3, CH2, CH2 something. No? So, meaning lang nun, for example, ito, CH3. etong tatlong hydrogen, connected sila sa carbon. So, ganun lang yung mga meaning nyan. No? H3C, oh, ganun din naman, no? binagbaliktad lang. Okay? So, ganun yung mga ways in representing molecules. No? We can show all the connectivities, that's Lewis structure, we can condense some of the idea, no? some of the connectivities. Pwede natin i-condense para hindi nakakatamad. No? So, pwede natin gawin itong partially condensed structure kung saan yung mga hydrogens connected to carbon ay hindi na pinapakita yung bond. No? Ito pwede pa yun i-condense. No? Even yung sa oxygen and hydrogen din. No? So, instead of writing old bond H, we write it as OH na lang. No? So, matic na itong dalawang atoms na to, they are connected to each other pag magkatabi sila. We can also have partially condensed structures. No? So, kung mapapansin natin, in this drawing, we have two CH3s connected to this carbon. Kaya ginagawa natin ito. CH3 subscript 2. Ano meaning nun? May dalawang CH3 sa nakadugtong sa next atom which is the carbon. Okay? Tapos itong rest na to, nakadugtong din yan sa carbon na yan. Okay? So, ganun lang yung mga idea. Although, we will see more of this in the future topics. No? So, sa ngayon, daanan lang muna natin. No? Para medyo familiar na kayo. Pero, in the future, aalamin pa natin yan in depth. No? 
And we can have the molecular formula, no? Kung saan hindi natin pinapakita yung motif ng connectivity nila, no? Hindi natin pinapakita yung uh, arrangement nila. Basta nilagay lang natin yung number of atoms. So, that's molecular formula. Okay? So, that's one way of representing molecules, no? So, pwede by Lewis structure, pwede partially condensed, wherein yung mga hydrogens, yung mga bond ng hydrogen, hindi na pinapakita, no? So, yan. And we have the condensed structure kung saan pinapakita na lang natin how many of this group is connected to the atom, no? So, ilang si H3 yung nakakonect sa carbon? May kita natin yun as subscripts, no? Dalawa daw, no? Anyway, malalaman naman natin yan sa mga susunod pa nating subject, no? I mean, topics, na. No? So, yan. So, alamin pa natin yan in depth, no? Uh, there are also other ways of representing molecule. I don't know if nalagay ko yung slide dito. Ay, hindi ko nalagay yung slide. So, we can draw them with uh, single line structures, no? Yung mga zigzag-zigzag na nakikita nyo. So, that's one way of representing organic substances natin, no? Each part of the zigzag, each edges, no? I mean, vertices pala. Yung mga vertex nyan. So, may meaning yan, no? So, may mga carbon sa dulo niyan. So, for example, ito, zigzag lang yan, pero that's actually an organic compound, no? So, depending on the number of the sharp turns sa zigzag, ganun karami yung carbons, no? So, for example, isang carbon, isang carbon, isang carbon, isang carbon, isang carbon, isang carbon, another carbon, carbon, carbon. So, ilang carbon yun? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, 9 carbons yan in total, no? So, yan. For example, ayan naman, 5 carbons in total yan, no? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, no? So, you will discover more of that sa laboratory nyo na, no? Sa alkanes, no? Okay? So, anyway, so, mapapansin natin that we have several ways of representing molecules sa organic chemistry. Kaya kailangan familiar na kayo with Lewis structures, no? Kasi itong mga ibang to, uh, mga variations lang yan ng Lewis structure, no? So, yan. Okay, so ano to? Uh, for example, ito, mga isomers natin. So, kung mapapansin natin, uh, the valency of the atoms is retained, no? So, for example, carbon is connected to four groups, hydrogen is connected to one group, oxygen is connected to two groups, no? So, that is true for all these molecules. However, the way they are connected are different, no? So, for example, we have this propanol. Yung OH nakadugtong sa dulong carbon. For isopropanol, the OH is connected in the middle carbon. No? So that means they have the same formula. However, they have different connectivities. So isomerian. So ito pa. Uh, dimethyl ether. No? Uh, ethyl methyl ether pala. So itong ethyl methyl ether naman, yung oxygen, mababansin natin, instead of being connected to hydrogen, that is connected to another carbon group. No? So, ayan. So, depending on the connectivity, may iba't ibang tawag sa kanila, no? Paano po sila pinapangalanan sa future lesson na natin malalaman, no? Basta yun lang yung idea ng isomer, no? We have the same valency. We have the same formula. However, the connections are different, no? So, ito na. Connecta sa first carbon. Ito na. Connecta sa second carbon. Ito, may dalawang carbon na nakakonect sa kanya, no? So, yun lang yung idea ng um, isomers. No? So, magkakaibang connection, pero iisa yung dami ng atoms. At yung valency ay preserved. No? So, anyway, punta tayo sa structural theory of matter activity. No? So, kung nanonood kayo ng organic chemistry video sa YouTube, no? yun sa playlist ko. Actually, na-discuss ko to doon in depth. No? So, anyway, so let's try to draw the isomers that we can create out of these chemical formulas. No? So, hindi ko lahat sasagutan kasi yung iba ititira ko para sa inyo. No? <laughs> Kayo na lang magsagot ng iba. Maybe after the discussion na lang. No? Okay, para may time pa kayong mag-quiz. Um, I mean, mag-exam. Kasi mamaya na yung deadline. Okay, so anyway. Ano yung mga pwede kong sagutan dito? 
Sasagot lang ako ng ilan, ha? Uh, Sky na bahala sa iba. Kunwari, ito, 1, 4, and 2. Oh, ayan na lang, 1, 4, and 2. So, sagutan ko yung 1, 2, and 4. Tapos, kay na bahala sa 3, 5, 6 na. So, paano po natin sasagutan yan? Paano natin kukunin yung mga constitutional isomers na? Yung isomers na iba-iba yung connectivity. Tawag doon constitutional isomer. So, ganito lang yan. No? Keep in mind yung valency nila. No? Ilang bonds pwede gawin nila. No? So, yan. So, for carbon, that's 4. No? So, because that's tetravalent. No? Sasagutan natin si 1. So, for carbon, that's tetravalent. So, that means, uh, gamit ako ng ibang color. So, carbon can be connected to four different groups. Na? It can create four bonds. Yung hydrogen, one bond lang pwede gawin niya. At yung oxygen, two bonds. Na? Kasi may lone pair siya. Okay? So, one of the possible structure that we can create out of C3H8O is ganito. Ito yung first technique. Since organic chemistry to, yung mga carbon, pinagdudugtong-dugtong natin. So, yan. Pagdugtong-dugtongin mo yung carbon. Okay. Oops. Okay. So, mapapansin natin, the valency is conserved, no? That means the carbon atoms are connected can be connected to four different groups. No? So this carbon is connect, can be connected to these groups, one, two, three. Tapos yung isang connection niya, ginamit niya to connect dito sa isa pang carbon. Okay, etong carbon naman na ito, that can be connected to four different groups, two of which are used to join this carbon and that carbon. No? So may dalawa pang bakante. No? Pwede ba dumugtong doon yung ibang atoms? Itong carbon naman na ito, may apat din siyang bonds. No? Apat yung pwede niyang gawing bonds. Tatlo yung bakante. So, pwede natin idugtong yung hydrogen or oxygen. Tignan natin kung saan pwede idugtong yan. Tapos, yung isang bakanteng bond niya, ginamit niya to connect with the other carbon sa tabi niya. No? So, yan. so, maintained yung ating valency. So, ngayon naman, Since nalagay na natin yung carbon chain natin, yung carbon backbone, and ganyan yung first uh, first step parate, no? You create the carbon backbone muna. Okay? So, the next step is yung hydrogen naman, no? So, saan kaya pwede idugtong yung hydrogen? E di sa dulo ng mga carbon, no? So, pwede ilagay natin sila sa mga dulo-dulo. Nara, ilagay ko dito, hydrogen. Ayan, connected na sila. Two, three... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh. Ano, ano mali ko? Dinugtong ko lahat ng hydrogen, pero yung oxygen hindi ko dinugtong. No? So, oh, that means hindi ko pa nagkukuha yung tamang structure. So, burahin ko muna yung, ox ah, burahin ko muna yung hydrogen na yan. Naiwan ko yung oxygen. Eh. So, ano gagawin ko? Yung oxygen, kailangan ko siya idugtong. Pwede dito, no? Pwede dyan ko siya idugtong. Tapos yung hydrogen dun sa dulo. Na. So, that means this is one way of drawing this molecule, C3H8O. So, paano yung ginawa natin? You draw the carbon backbone first. No? Tapos yung mga bakanting bonds, no? i-fill I -fill in mo ng mga atoms. No? Lagay mo yung mga hydrogens, lagay mo yung oxygen, and so on and so forth. No? So, this is one structure for this formula. Ano pa pwedeng gawin? Ang pwedeng gawin naman natin is itong OH na to, instead nakakonekta yan dito sa dulo, pwede ko yung ikonekta dito sa gitna eh. Pwede ko ilagay yan dito sa gitna. No? So, gawin ko lang muna ulit yung backbone. So, kumbaga, ang gagawin ko this time, itong hydrogen at itong OH, pagpapalitin ko sila ng pwesto. Okay? Okay. So, yan. So, napagpalit natin yung pwesto nila. No? So, originally, the OH is connected here sa carbon na to. 
Pag nilagay mo yun dito sa dulo, same lang din yun. Parang flinip mo lang yung molecule, no? Parang binaliktad mo lang siya na papel. So, pag ito nilagay mo dito sa kabilang dulo, same lang yun as this one. Flinip mo lang yung molecule mo. Pero itong nasa baba, different to. Bakit, no? Kasi this OH, no, is connected to the last carbon. The OH here is connected to the middle carbon. So, ibang structure to. So, that means isomer to. Okay? So, ano pa yung pwede natin gawin dito? Pwede rin naman na yung oxygen, hindi siya connected sa hydrogen. Pwede i-connect natin yung oxygen sa dalawang carbons na. No? So, pwede natin gawin yun. Nateka lang, kailangan ko ng space. Burahin ko itong nasa taas. So, pwede naman, yung oxygen, hindi ko siya idugtong sa hydrogen. Pwede ko siya idugtong sa dalawang carbon. So, kumbaga, you have your carbon chain, idugtong mo siya sa gitna, no? So, kunwari, o, oh, kunwari, dyan na lang, no? So, maintained pa rin yung valency ng mga atoms, then you can attach the other atoms na lang, no? Okay, so mapapansin natin, the three molecules have different connectivities, no? So, pag magkakaiba sila ng connectivity, that means they are isomers, no? So, this is structure at the top. The oxygen is connected to two different carbons, no? Itong carbon na CH3, itong carbon na CH2. So, that's one variation, no? Itong nasa baba naman, this is structure, ang um, OH, no? ang oxygen that is connected to carbon and hydrogen. So, magkaibang format yon. Kasi dito, dalawang carbon-carbon yung connectivity nila. This time, carbon-hydrogen yung connectivity nila. Itong nasa baba, same idea, carbon and hydrogen yung magkadugtong, pero sa ibang atom siya nakakonect. So, ito nasa last carbon na kadugtong. Ito nasa middle carbon. Okay? So, depending on the connectivity, you can have different isomers. No? So, those are the constitutional isomers for those, uh, for this chemical formula. No? So, ganun lang. So, basically, yung ginagawa lang natin, yung parang ginagawa nyo nung bata kayo, no? May nagdudugtong-dugtong nyo lang yung mga lego-lego. So, ganito lang din gagawin natin. Pagdugtong-dugtongin lang natin yung mga atoms, no? By connecting those available bonds, no? We can create different molecules, no? So, ganun lang. So, yan yung isang way to answer number one, no? Okay, so proceed ako number two, no? Tapos yung iba kayo na bahala, no? Maybe after the class na lang. Para may time pa kayo sa lab nyo. Okay? So, yun yung sagot natin for number one. So, for number two, so, anong formula natin? C3H7Cl. So, we have three carbons. Carbon is tetravalent, so it can form four bonds, no? Hydrogen is monovalent and Cl is monovalent as well with with three lone pairs na. Ayan, bilugan ko. Hindi kita masyado eh. Okay? So, yun yung Cl natin. So, ang task na lang natin is to create different isomers out of their possible connectivities na. So, gawa tayo ng iba't ibang connection na pwede yung gawin. So, the first thing na pwede natin gawin is yung carbon pag dugtong-dugtongin natin. Okay? Okay. So, yan. Okay. So, ito yung first uh, step. Yung carbon pag dugtong-dugtongin nyo. So, yan. So, we can see here that this carbon, this carbon, and that carbon can form four bonds. No? Ito, yung, isa, yung isang bond na ito, ginamit niya to connect to this carbon. Itong carbon na to, kinonect nyo yung dalawa. Tapos dalawa na lang yung bakante niya. Tapos itong carbon na to, isa, ginamit niya for bonding. Yung tatlo, bakante. No? Then, 
after connecting your carbons, we can now connect the hydrogens. No? So, yung hydrogens, we can connect that sa dulo ng carbon bonds. No? Okay. Parang mas madali ito kaysa sa Lewis structure na ginagawa natin. No? Medyo. <laughs> okay. So, ito na yung seven hydrogens. No? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tapos yung natira, edi CL na yung ilagay mo, no? CL. And pakita mo yung lone pairs, of course. And binubulugan ko yung lone pair kasi hindi makita masyado. Okay. So, ayan. So, this is one isomer of this formula, C3H7Cl. So, ayan. Yung CL ay nakadugtong sa dulo. Ano pa yung pwedeng gawin? Pwede itong CL, idugtong ko sa gitna. No? Itong CL, pati yung H na yan, pag-switch ko ng places. No? So, ganun yung gagawin ko dito sa baba. Okay. So, ito. Um, yan. Okay. So, ginawa ko. Ay, nakalimutan ko yung lone pairs. Okay. So, ang ginawa ko dito, yung CL, nasa dulo siya nakakonect, but this time, I connected it sa middle carbon. Na? So, magkaiba sila ng connectivity. Na? So, ito sa dulo eh. Ito nasa gitna. So, magkaiba sila ng connection. So, we can say that they are isomers. Kunwari, ito, ilagay ko dito sa kabilang dulo. Isomer din ba yun? Hindi. No? So, bakit hindi? Kasi, Kapag itong CL nilagay mo sa dulo, pag binaliktad mo yung molecule, ganito lang din kakalabasan niya. So, kung maga pag flinip mo yung paper, yun pa rin yung structure niya. No? Doon pa rin siya nakakonekta sa same carbon na yan. No? So, hindi yun pwede gawing isomer. No? So, itong CL, pag nilagay mo sa dulo, that's the same as this structure. Flinip mo lang. No? So, yun. Pero this one, this is not. No? Kasi i-flip mo man yan, hindi yan magiging itsura neto. No? Hindi sila magiging parehas ng itsura. So, these are the isomers for the formula C3H7Cl. Um, pwede ba yung Cl ilagay ko sa gitna, gaya ng ginawa ko sa oxygen? Not really. Bakit? Hindi siya pwede sa gitna because Cl by default can only form one bond. No? So, isang bond lang yung pwede niya gawin by default. So, that means, nasa dulo lang talaga siya. Kumbaga, terminal atom lang talaga siya. Okay? So, yan yung answers natin for number two. No? So, yung isang CL nasa dulo, yung isang CL nasa gitna. Oh, let's try the last item. Tapos, yung ibang item kayo na bahala. No? <laughs> so, ganun. Um, Connect, uh, comment nyo na lang sa discussion sa canvas. No? Ano yung isang sasagutan natin? Number 4? Okay, number 4. C4H10O. So, ganun pa rin. We have carbon that can form 4 bonds, hydrogen that can form 1 bond, and oxygen that can form uh, 2 bonds. No? Tapos may 2 lone pairs siya. Magawa tayo ng mga isomers niyan. C4H10O. So, the first molecule na pwede natin gawin is the carbons are connected. No? Dugtong-dugtong yung mga carbon. Gawa tayo ng carbon backbone. Kaya siya parang tinawag na backbone kasi tignan nyo yung backbone nyo. Diba? Dugtong-dugtong na ano lang yun, ba? Dugtong-dugtong na bones. So, parang ganun lang din to, no? Sipin nyo backbone nyo yan. Kaya tawag natin talaga dito is backbone. Okay. So, yan. So, I have connected four carbons to be our backbone. So, dun sila pwede dumugtong. Tapos, yung hydrogen, dugtong ko na. Hydro dugtong ko yung mga hydrogens. No? So, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No? Uh, hindi, ko, hindi ako magdudugtong ng hydrogen dito agad kasi... Kagaya ng ginawa natin kanina, nakalimutan ko yung oxygen. So, pwede ko idugtong yung oxygen dito. No? Yan. Then yung hydrogen. Okay. So, this is one uh, isomer of this formula, C4H10O. So, yan yung isang structure niya. 
So oxygen is connected to two different atoms, two different groups, so that's okay. Maintain the valency. Carbon is connected to four different groups, no? so maintain the valency. Hydrogens are connected to one group. No? Isa isa lang siya na konekta. So maintain pa rin yung valency. No? So that's one structure for this formula, C4H10O. Ano pa pwede gawin natin dito sa OH na to? O pwede idugtong ko to dito sa second carbon. So, dugtong ko yan doon. So, pag switchin ko itong hydrogen na to, pati itong OH na. No? Dito na yung OH. Yan. Okay, so this is one isomer of this formula, C10, uh, C4H10O. No? So yung OH nakadugtong dito sa carbon na to. Tapos itong OH na to nakadugtong dito sa second carbon. Pag ito kaya nilagay ko dito, is that another isomer or same lang siya sa isa dito? Pag yung OH dinugtong ko dito, that is same as the OH connected to this carbon. Kasi, tignan mo, um, pag ito dinugtong ko dito, that's same as this OH connected here. Pag binaliktad mo yung paper nga, sabi ko nga, pag flinip mo yan, uh, so same pa rin sila ng connectivity. Ang one way for you to know kung same pa rin yan ng connectivity is bilangin mo kung gano'n siya kalayo from the end. no? For example, I will make this as my number one carbon. Kasi ito number two carbon. Okay? So, yan. So, itong OH na to nakakonekta sa first carbon. Itong OH na to nakakonekta to sa second carbon. Okay? Kapag yung OH na to nilagay ko naman dito. So, kung maapapansin nyo, by counting here, magiging pangatlong carbon yun, di ba? Pero kapag nag-count ako dito to the left, ano mangyayari? This is the first carbon. Sa second carbon, dudugtong yung OH. No? So, same-same lang yon as counting left to right as light, right to left. No? So, ganun. So, they are the same. Pag ito, kinonect ako dito. Okay? So, ganun lang. Ano pa? Ano pa pwede ko gawin dito? Pwede yung oxygen nakadugtong sa dalawang carbon instead of hydrogen. No? Yung sa sandwich ko siya sa gitna. So, Tignan natin kung kaya pa ng space. Carbon, carbon, oxygen, carbon. Sige, carbon. So, pwedeng ganyan yan. Kung baga, kayo na bahala, no? Uh, Mag-isip kung paano mo sila pagdudugtong yun, no? Okay. So, this is one isomer. We're in... The oxygen is not connected to hydrogen, rather to two different carbons. No? Carbon sa left, carbon sa right. No? So, isa tong isomer. Okay? Uh, yan. So, ano pa pwede natin gawin? Pwede tong oxygen dugtong natin dito sa bandang dulo. No? Pwede, ko na, pwede ko idugtong yan doon. No? Ayan, pwede nandyan siya. Okay, so ano mapapansin natin? So is this the same as this one? Hindi. Kasi itong isa, we have two carbons here on the left, two carbons on the right. Ito naman, we have three carbons on the left, one carbon on the right. Na. So magkaiba sila ng connectivity. Okay, so these are the four isomers for the formula uh, C4H10O. Na. So yan yung mga different connectivities na pwede natin gawin na. So, the rest, I will give them to you to practice. No? Yung number 3, 5, and 6, ungraded naman yan. So, ang gagawin nyo na lang is, gawa kayo ng mga possible ways. No? How to connect these different atoms. No? So, ganito lang yung basihan yung concept, yung valency. No? So, yan. So, carbon can connect to four different groups. No? Hydrogen can connect to one group only. Oxygens can form to two groups na. 
Okay, so yan. It is also possible that they form double bonds, no? So, yung mga double bonds. So, ano nangyayari kapag double bonds yan? So, yung dalawang groups that is being connected to, ano, to the same atom, no? Gawa tayong example ng double bond. Naburahin ko na to, ah. Screenshot nyo na lang, no? Oh, sige. Pwede nyo naman balikan sa YouTube, na no? Upload ko to mamaya. So, for example, we have C2H4. Uh, Nara, ito. Wala yan dyan, na ah. Pero ito yung idea na pwede kang mag-form ng double bonds naman. So, C2H4, you have two carbons and four hydrogens, no? Ang mapapansin nyo, vacant yung dalawang bond, no? So, you can actually connect them, no? Pwede mo sila pagdugtungin. Pwede mo sila pagdugtungin like that. So, you can create double bond, no? So, yan. Okay? So, yan. Mapapansin nyo, may apat pa rin connectivities yung carbon. One, two, three, four. Apat yung bonds niya. Same as this one. One, two, three, four, no? So, this is the double bond, no? So, paano tayo nagkaroon ng double bond dyan? So, kanina, bakante lang yung isa, di ba? Okay? So, since wala na tayong atom na natira to connect, ano, to connect dito sa vacant slots na to, pwede yung idugtong na lang natin silang dalawa, no? Yan. So, may double bond na tayo. Okay? So, ganun lang. Another example is the triple bond, no? Oh, paano yung triple bond? Hari, we have C2H2. Ito yung valency nila. Okay? So, mapapansin nyo, itong carbon na to, may dalawang vacant na slots, no? Dalawa, dalawa pa pwede dugtungan niya. Itong carbon na to, dalawa rin yung bakante, no? So, pwedeng pagdugtungin natin yung mga vacant na slots nila, no? Pwedeng pagdugtungin natin ito. Pagdugtungin mo yan, tapos ito, pagdugtungin mo rin, no? As we connect those bonds, no? We can create triple bonds, no? So, ganun. Okay. So, yan. Triple bond, no? So, ganun. Pero if unsure kayo, pwede kayo mag <laughs> Okay. So, pwede rin kayo mag no? Pero, ayun nga. Uh, for organic chemistry, simple lang naman yung structures dito, no? Basta alam mo yung valency. Yun. Pwede mo sila pagdugtong-dugtongin, no? So, unlike the Last lesson natin sa nasurul, medyo maraming technicalities, no? Pero for organic chemistry, basta alam mo to. Ito, basta alam mo yung kanilang valency. Then you can create different connections, no? You can create different types of bonds, no? So, yun lang. So, yun. Sagutan nyo na lang yung 3, uh, 5, and 6 sa inyong after the class, no? So, yan. Okay, and punta naman tayo sa functional groups. Na. Depending on the connectivity of your atoms, you can have functional groups. Na. So, ano mga functional groups? They are group of atoms. No? Or, uh, pwede silang atom, pwede silang group of atom. No? Within a molecule that show characteristic or predictable properties. Na. So, kumbaga, ito yung mga specific sets of atom na magkakadugtong, no? So, tawag natin sa kanila ay functional group, no? Parang by default, ganun yung itsura nila, no? So, since yun yung itsura nila, may certain properties tayong pwedeng masabi about them, no? So, anyway, papakita naman natin kung ano yung mga default functional groups sa organic chemistry, no? So, ito yung mga default organic chemistry functional groups, no? So, kunwari, itong OH, magkadugtong yan. Pag nakita mo magkadugtong yan, you have alcohol. Okay? So, gaya ng sa example natin kanina. So, for example, itong OH, magkadugtong alcohol yan. Alcohol to, alcohol yan. Itong isopropanol, ito yung nasa uh, alcohol sa bahay. Propanol yan din. No. Okay, so yan. Alcohol, kapag yung OH, magkadugtong by default, na. No? So, ano yung mga properties na pwede nila gawin? Hydrogen bond, no? So, yun. Kasi OH yan, eh. Di ba? Hydrogen bond. Kailangan may O, pati H na magkadugtong. Uh, so, yun. So, yun yung, ano, 
yun yung mga karakteristik ng mga functional groups. No? Depending on the type of the atoms connected, you can say kung ano yung mga properties nila. Such as for alcohol, hydrogen bond. No? So another uh, functional group is the amine group. No? Or NH2. No? Pwede yung NH2. So yan. Instead of oxygen, nitrogen naman this time. No? So yan. So, anong, anong, anong karakteristik ng bond na to? Pwede siya mag-form ng hydrogen bond, di ba? So, remember, hydrogen bond, OH, OH, NH, and FH, di ba? So, yan. So, yun yung mga similar properties nila. Next one, we have aldehyde. No? So, ang aldehyde, ganito yung itsura. C double bond, OH. No? So, may C double bond, O ka. No? Tapos, may hydrogen ka sa dulo. Ganito yung ganito yung format niya, no? Okay? So whenever makakita ka ng ganitong structure, you have aldehyde, no? So yan, by default ganyan yung itsura niya. If you have ketone naman, you have C double bond O. Walang H sa dulo. Pwedeng carbon na yun nasa kabilang magkabilang dulo, no? Pero kapag may hydrogen dun sa isang dulo, aldehyde 'yon. Pag walang hydrogen sa magkabilang dulo, ketone 'yon. Okay, so ganyan yung mga formats nila. Carboxylic acid naman. Zoom in na natin. So carboxylic acid, meron kang C double bond O, tapos may OH bond ka dito. So hindi to alcohol. Kasi meron ka pang group dito na kasama na C double bond O. No? So itong group na to as collective, ano, ang collective term sa kanila ay carboxylic acid group na. So, C double bond O, OH. Hindi mo pwede sabihin alcohol yan. Ha? Kasi, itong tawag sa buong term na to ay carboxylic acid. Na. Ito, hindi rin to pwede tawagin ketone. Kasi, kasama niya yung OH. No? So, by default, ganyan talaga yung itsura ng carboxylic acids natin. Esters. Na. So, itong ester naman, C double bond O, tapos may O, tapos yung R. Ano yung R? Yung RR pwedeng, ano, pwedeng carbon groups, no? Such as this one. C double bond O, O, tapos may carbon group ka na, no? So, yan. So, sila ay ester. Pag H yung katabi nito siya ay carboxylic acid. Pero pag carbon yung kadugtong ng oxygen, that's ester. Ang amide naman, no? don't confuse with amine. Ang amine, NH2, or nitrogen agad yung katabi, pag amide, may C double bond O ka before the amine. Okay? So, yan. Yan yung mga functional groups by default that you have to be familiar with. No? Bakit? Kasi sila yung i-discuss natin for the last part of this subject. No? So, when we discuss natin yung alcohols, yung amines, yung aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, esters, and amides in the future. No? So, yan. So, be familiar with their groups, no? Kung paano sila nagko-connect, connect, no? Ano yung format nila? So, ganun. So, ito yung mga functional groups na kailangan natin kabisaduhin, no? So, madali lang naman yan, eh, no? Ako, ang way ko to remember that is nilalagyan ko ng R, no? Nari, alcohol. Ang alcohol ay raw. Meaning ng R ay carbon group, no? Pwede carbon, Si uh, H2, si H2, si H3, ganun. Basta puro carbon group yung R. Puro carbon na yung kadugtong niyan. Regardless kung gano'ng karaming carbon yung nakatabi sa kanya. Basta may OH sa dulo, alcohol yan. Amine, ang tawag dyan ay RNH. No? Okay, so yan. Although this is one version of amine, no? pwede yung ano, Pwede itong amin natin, yung hydrogen na dalawa, palitan natin ng R group din. No? Pwede ka rin magkaganito. RNHR. No? So, isa lang yung hydrogen sa nitrogen mo. So, that's still amin. Amin pa rin yan. No? Pwede rin naman walang hydrogen. RNRR. No? R prime, R double prime. No? So, magkakaibang carbon groups na nakakonekta sa nitrogen mo, amin pa rin yun. No? So, ganun. Basta may nitrogen. No? Amin tawag doon. O, aldehyde. Ako, ang tawag ko dito ay arco. Arco. No? 
sa R ko, bakit? C double band OH. C double band OH. No? So, that's one way for me to memorize it then. No? So, raw alcohol. Amine, pwedeng RNH2, RNR, RNHR. O kaya, walang hydrogen. RNRR. No? So, magkakaibang carbon groups yun na konekta sa kanya. Pag aldehyde, R ko. So, yan. So, yan. R ko. C double band O. H. Basta may makita kayong CO, usually naka-double bond yun. Okay? O, keto naman, ang tawag ko dyan ay R-core. Okay? So, C double bond O, tapos another carbon group. No? Carbon group, carbon group, then C double bond O. R-core. So, ganun ko siya na minimemorize. Kaya na lang bahala. No? <laughs> uh, carboxylic acid, ano yan, tawag ko dyan, r -Q. Magkaiba yung R ko sa R ko. Ito may, ano, nadadama mo yung double O, R ko. So, yan. So, C double band O, OH. No? So, yan. So, that's your carboxylic acid. Anong uh, oras na ba? Ester. <laughs> o, yung ester naman, R ko, R ko naman yan, no? Oh. Uh, don't confuse yourselves with R ko. R ko to, tawag ko dito, R ko, no? So, yan. Pag r -core, ester. Pag r -core, ketone. No? C double bond O, tapos may OR. No? Again, R can be any functional, uh, I, I mean, any carbon groups. No? Basta R, carbon group yan. Amide, yan ay, ay, wala, nawala. Ayan, so, pwedeng r -co nh 2 O, kumbaga, para yung amin pero may C double bond O lang sa gitna, no? So, yan. So, ganun. Yan ay amide, no? And similar with amide, may tatlong versions din na, uh, similar with amine, yung amide natin, may tatlong version din yan, no? Pwedeng dalawang hydrogen, pwedeng isang hydrogen, plus isang R group, plus pwede rin walang hydrogen, no? Okay. So, yan. So, yan yung mga pwedeng variations with amine. Although, we will discuss that, no? Uh, para hindi kayo ma... Ano? Hindi kayo ma-confuse. May mga visual examples naman tayo sa next slides, no? Okay. So, yan lang yung mga functional groups. Uh, be familiar with them. You can use this technique na ginamit ko dati to remember this, no? Arco, arcor, arcor. No, wag ka lang malito sa u pati o, no. Si pag o, isang o lang, kapag u, dalawang o. So ganun yung way ko to memorize them. Eh. Effective naman. So kayo pwedeng ganyan na lang, no. Or kung gusto niyo pahirapan sarili niyo, gayahin niyo ako, no. So okay na bahala, no. So anyway, let's go here sa alcohols, no. So alcohol is one functional group, no, wherein the OH is connected to the carbon, your R group, no. Okay? So, ganun lang. Alcohol, yun na yun. Yung OH nakakonekta sa carbon. Depending on the carbon to which your OH is connected, you can either have a primary alcohol, a secondary alcohol, or a tertiary alcohol. No? So, depende kung saan nakadugtong yung OH, iba't ibang uri ng alcohol yung pwede kang magkaroon. Pwedeng primary, secondary, or tertiary. Ano yung difference nila? Okay, so for primary alcohol, yung, uh, yung OH mo na nakadugtong sa carbon ay may nakadugtong na isang group lang, isang functional group lang. Okay. Ako, one way ko to identify the primary, secondary, tertiary is to count the hydrogens. Eh. Ganun na lang ginagawa ko eh. So for example, itong OH na to connected to with carbons with dalawang hydrogen. So, pag dalawang hydrogen, primary. No? So, ganun yung way ko to remember that. Pwede rin naman, based on the R group, yung uh, ano, carbon group na nakadugtong sa carbon. So, medyo baka makonfuse kayo eh. No? So, ganun na lang. Pwede i-count nyo yung hydrogen. Pwede i-count nyo yung R group. No? Yung atoms na hindi hydrogen. Okay? So, that's primary alcohol. Pag secondary alcohol naman, you have two R groups here. You have two different carbon groups here. Pwede rin naman, 
in uh, sa point of view ng hydrogen, isang hydrogen na lang ay nakadugtong sa carbon na dinudugtungan ng OH. No? So, that's the secondary alcohol. Okay, sa primary, may dalawang hydrogen. Secondary, may isang hydrogen. Pag tertiary, walang hydrogen. Okay? Or, uh, may tatlong R groups ka. No? So, so, this is R group, R1, R2, R1, R2, R3. Okay? So, ganun yung pwedeng maging point of view nyo when it comes to the type of alcohol. No? Pag isang group lang yung nakadugtong, uh, primary alcohol yon one zero uh, one zero or primary no pag secondary alcohol yan may two R groups ka or may isang hydrogen lang no so yan that's secondary alcohol if you have tertiary alcohol naman you have different R groups tapos walang hydrogen sa carbon na to okay so that's tertiary alcohol okay so two hydrogen one hydrogen no hydrogen. In uh, kapag R group naman yung titignan mo, 1 R group, 2 R group, 3 R group na. So, okay, na bahala mamili kung ano yung gusto nyong way to remember them. No? Uh, both are correct naman, no? if used correctly. <laughs> okay? So, ganun lang. So, that's alcohol, no? Okay, so let's try this, no? So, draw the Lewis structures... Uh, ano sabi dito? Draw the Lewis structure and the condensed structural formula for the two alcohols with the molecular formula C3H8O. Okay? So, kunwari, gagawa daw tayo ng alcohol out of this formula. Parang yung ginawa lang din natin to kanina, no? Omatic, gawin mo yung H and O, pagdugtungin mo na, no? So, kunin mo na yung isang H at isang O, no? So, you have C3H7, tapos may OH ka na agad, no? So, yan. Oh, ikaw na bahala mag dito. So, pwede mo gawin ganyan. No? Yung carbon, pagdugtong-dugtongin mo. Yung hydrogen, ilagay mo sa mga dulo-dulo. Tapos, yung OH, pagsamahin mo na. No? Pwede mo rin pakita yung bond. Pwede kahit hindi na. Basta automatic na pag OH magkatabi, alcohol yon na. So, this is one structural formula for uh, structural isomer for this alcohol. No? Okay, so yan yung Lewis structure. Ngayon, paano yung condensed structural formula? Paano ginagawa yan? Ganito lang. You start from the end, mula sa left. O mula sa left, dito ka mag-start. No? Siyempre, sa carbon. So, paano sinusulat yung condensed structural formula? Start ka sa left na carbon. So, yan. Sulat mo ang carbon. Tapos, tapos, ang susunod na tanungin mo, ilang hydrogens yung connected to this carbon? So, this carbon has three hydrogens around it. Na? One, two, three. Itong carbon na to, may tatlong hydrogen. So, paano yung susulat yon? CH3. Okay, so CH3 itong part na to. Then, proceed ka sa next carbon. O, ano yung mga nakadugtong sa carbon na to? May dalawang hydrogen, CH2. Okay. So, CH3, ito. Itong carbon, may dalawang hydrogen. So, CH2 yon. After nyan, punta ka sa next carbon. Uh, ilang hydrogen na kadugtong? Dalawa, H2. Then finally, you have your OH na. So, this is the Lewis structure. Lewis. Ito yung structural. Uh, I mean condensed. Okay. So, ganun lang. Na. So, paano ulit tayo magkakagawa ng condensed structural formula out of our Lewis structure? You look at the leftmost carbon. So, this is carbon. May, may tatlong hydrogen, CH3. Another carbon, may dalawang hydrogen, CH2. Another carbon, may dalawang hydrogen, CH2. Then finally, OH. CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. No? Uh, you can create Lewis structure out of the condensed formula. O, paano tayo gagawa ng ano? Yung opposite naman. So, gagawin mo lang dito is, ano, tignan mo lang yung carbon chain. 
So that means itong mga carbons na to, they are connected. Tapos yung hydrogens na to, they are connected to this carbon. This is connected to this carbon. This is connected to this carbon. Okay, so that means this carbon has three carbons, uh, three hydrogens rather. This carbon has two hydrogens. This carbon has two hydrogens. And then lastly, OH. No? So ganun lang yung paggawa ng stru condensed structural formula from your Lewis structure. Okay, start from the left, then going to the right. No? So itong hydrogen na to, dito sa carbon na hadugtong. Ito, dito na hadugtong. Ito, dito na hadugtong. Then of course, your functional group usually na hadugtong yan kung saan carbon naka-indicate na. Usually na sa dulo na. So yan yung ano, isang isomer niyan. O, saan pa kaya natin pwede idugtong yung ano, yung OH? Mm, lagay ko dito sa gitna, no? Etong OH lagay ko sa gitna. Pag ito nilagay ko sa dulo, that is the same as this one. Okay? Pag ito nilagay ko dito sa leftmost, that is the same as the rightmost uh, OH, no? Kasi pag parang flinip mo lang yung paper, no? Flinip mo lang yung molecule. Okay, so try natin. Instead of placing the OH sa dulo, ilalagay ko siya dito sa second carbon. No? So burahin ko lang. Sobrahin ko na yan. Siyempre, magbabago yung structural formula natin. Isomer yan eh. So, magkakaiba sila ng form, ano, structure. So, yung OH, lalagay ko siya dito sa gitna. So, yung H, lalagay ko sa dulo. Okay. So, this is another isomer of this formula. C3H8O. Okay. So, this is alcohol kasi may OH ka. Ngayon, paano mo drawing yung condensed structural formula? So, ganun pa rin naman. You start from the leftmost. No? Tapos bilangin mo kung ano yung mga nakadugtong sa kanya. This, this time, hydrogen na. So, you have your tatlong H. So, that's CH3. Sa oh, so next carbon, ano yung mga nakadugtong? May H, then may OH. No? So, sino yung, sino yung unang nilalagay? Usually, ang unang nilalagay ay yung hydrogen. Then your OH na. CH3, CH, OH. Then, last one, CH3. Okay? So, ganun yung paggawa dito. Paano uli? So, start ka sa leftmost. You have your carbon, three hydrogens, CH3. Carbon, ano yung nakadugtong dito sa gitna? H and OH. Sino yung isusulat mo na? Yung H. Okay? So, yung H muna yung susulat, no? Then, yung OH, no? So, ganun po. Okay? Then, lastly, this carbon, puro hydrogen yan. So, CH3 na lang yan, no? So, again, yan yung ating mga isomers for this formula, no? So, draw ko uli para makita nyo. And then, you can take a screenshot. Um, by the way, practice nyo na lang ito sa bahay, ha? Ay, nasa bahay naman kayo eh. CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. Ha? Observe the difference ha? So, yung OH natin nasa gitna, yung OH natin nasa dulo. Na? So, magkaiba sila ng condensed structural formula. So, that means they are isomers. Na? So, ganun. O, screenshot nyo na lang. Then, I will proceed with the next functional group. Okay, so the next functional group is amine. So, ano yung meron sa amines, no? Pwede siyang, pwede siyang RNHR. Pwede rin siyang RNRR, no? Pwedeng dalawa hydrogen niya, pwedeng isa lang, pwedeng wala. So, depending on that type of, ano, amine, we have different classifications. Pwede siyang primary, secondary, or tertiary. So, kailan mo malalaman kapag primary ang amine? So, your amine is primary if it contains two hydrogens. No? So, kapag dalawa yung hydrogens niya, that is primary amine. Pag isang hydrogen yun, that's secondary amine. Pag walang hydrogen na nakakonect, that's tertiary. So, let's look at these examples. We have methyl amine. 
you can see may dalawang H sa nitrogen. So that's a primary amine. So we have this one naman, dimethylamine. So you can see nitrogen is connected to one hydrogen only. So that's a secondary amine. This one we have nitrogen without hydrogens. No? Puro carbon yung nakadugtong sa kanya. So that's trimethylamine no? or a tertiary amine. Primary, secondary, tertiary. You know? So, ayan naman. Nakalagay na naman dyan. So, practice na lang kayo. Ayan. Uh, paano ulaman yung class hydrogen? No? Kanina sa alcohol, pwedeng hydrogen, pwedeng R group. No? Pero ako, I prefer hydrogens. No? Kasi, yun nga, katulad ng amin, hydrogen yung basis. No? So, kapag yung alcohol, dalawang hydrogens yung nakadugtong sa carbon, na dinudugtongan ng OH, that is primary. Pag isang hydrogen lang yung nakadugtong sa carbon na may OH, that's secondary. Pag walang hydrogen dyan, no, that's tertiary. Okay. For example, ito. No? So, this OH is connected to carbon with two hydrogens, no? Kalimutan ko pala sabihin yun. So, since we have two hydrogens here, we have a primary alcohol here. Okay? So, kasi may dalawang hydrogens sa carbon na dinudugtungan ng OH. No? How about this one? So, this carbon is connected to OH. And it is also connected to one hydrogen only. So, pag one hydrogen lang, that's secondary alcohol. No? Paano kapag walang hydrogen, edi tertiary. No? So, ganun lang. So, ganun din sa amin, ha? So, count nyo lang yung hydrogen. No? So, depending on the number of hydrogen, you can predict whether they are primary, secondary, or tertiary. Uh, ano naman to? Draw the condensed structural formula for the two primary amines with the Molecular formula, C3H9N. Okay, so by the way, so let's look at the problem. Sabi dito, primary amine. So, gagawin mo, from the formula, kuha ka na ng NH2. Kasi para maging primary yung amine, may NH2 siya. So, magbawas ka na ng dalawang hydrogen. No? So, you, you are left with C3H9-27. No? So, yan. So, ito yung gagawan mo ng backbone. Ito yung idudugtong mo na amine. Kasi primary. Di ba? Pag primary, NH2. So, okay. So, ganun gagawin nyo. Ang kalaho kung ano. Okay. So, gawa ako ng carbon backbone. Na? Carbon, carbon, carbon. Show the valency. Ipakita mo yung bonds na pwede nila gawin. Then, ilagay mo yung hydrogen. na to. 7 8 na. Ayan. So, yan yung ano. First na primary amine natin na. Okay. So, yan yung first primary amine natin. So, we have NH2. So, primary on Then, ito ay nakudugtong sa dulong carbon. Okay. So, yan. So, that's primary amine. Paano kaya natin gagawin yung isa pa? Kasi sabi dito, dalawa eh. So, yung ikalawang uri ng amine, pwede gawin, ipag-switch natin siya. Itong NH2, ilipat natin sa dito, sa gitna. Pwede yan, no? Parang OH lang yan, no? Okay, so ang ginawa ko, pinag-switch ko yung NH2 sa H, no? So, yan. So, this is still primary amine. Baka isipin nyo secondary amine yan, no? Bakit? Kasi kapag sinabi natin primary amine, may dalawang hydrogen connected to the nitrogen. Sa alcohol, pag OH to, ito secondary alcohol. Ito primary alcohol. But this time, amine to, so hindi natin yung nakadugtong kay carbon. Ganun sa alcohol, ba? 
sa amin hindi. Yung dami ng hydrogen na nakadugtong sa nitrogen, yung basis no. So both are primary amines though they are isomers. Bakit? Kasi their connectivities are different na. So this NH2 is connected to the to this carbon, the last carbon. Pwede ring first depende sa point of view nyo. Pwede Pwede naman yung NH2 ay connected sa middle carbon. Na. So, the first and the last carbon, this is different with the middle carbon. Okay? So, those are the isomers. O, paano naman yung condensed structural formula? O, similar lang din sa ginawa natin kanina. Start from the leftmost. Na. Carbon. Tapos may tatlong hydrogen yan. So, CH3. Next carbon. May dalawang hydrogen, so that's CH2. This carbon, tapos may dalawang hydrogen. Then, your functional group. Okay? So that's CH3, CH2, CH2, and H2. Okay, so I think structural formula and the condensed structural formula for this Lewis structure. So gawin, gawin naman natin to. Uh, paano to? Uh, start from the left. You have three hydrogens here, so that's CH3. Next, carbon. Ano yung nakadugtong dito? May H and my NH2. Okay? So, anong gagawin natin dyan? Unahin mo yung hydrogen. Then, NH2. Okay? Then, last one, you have carbon and three hydrogens. No? Okay, so as you can see, magkaiba sila ng structural, uh, condensed structural formula that indicates na sila ay isomers. No? And by looking at the Lewis structure, they are, yes, isomers. No? So, yan. So, itong NH2 nasa dulo, itong NH2 nasa gitna. No? So, that's how you create condensed structural formulas. No? So, ganun. Another way pala, no? another way to draw the condensed structural formula is to itong, N, itong groups na dinugtong mo, i-connect mo dito sa carbon. No? Pwedeng ipakita mo yung bond. No? So, pwede yun. Pwedeng isulat mo yun as ganito. So, your functional group is connected to the carbon. No, na dinudugtungan niya. Pwede rin ito. Itong nasa baba, pwede rin itong nasa taas. Basta same-same lang yung idea. No? So, ganun lang. Screenshot nyo na lang. Pwede rin naman sa YouTube, screenshot nyo na lang. Upload ko siya mamaya. No? So, yan yung ating amines. Okay? Oh, next one, aldehydes and ketones. No? So, ano yung mapapansin nyo na similar sa kanila? They both contain what's called the carbonyl group. No? So what is a carbonyl group? No? Carbonyl group is C double bond O. No? So para sila may C double bond O. So that means they are carbonyl groups. No? Pero kapag H yung nakadugtong sa carbonyl, sa so C double bond O, kapag hydrogen yung nakadugtong doon, that's aldehyde. Pag carbon yung nakadugtong doon, that's ketone. Okay? So, yun ang yung difference nila. So, aldehyde and ketones, they have the carbonyl group here, the C double bond O. Pero, pag H yung nakadugtong doon sa carbonyl group, that's aldehyde. Pag carbon yung nakadugtong doon, that's ketone. No? So, yan. So, ganun lang yung difference nila. No? Okay, so, yan. Uh, ito rin yung dahilan bakit may meme sa Facebook na naalala ko lang. Yung Celine Dion, <laughs> die own. Kasi kapag die own, own kasi yung pangalan ng mga ketone. Kaya nga own. No? Since may dalawa kang ketone, die own. No? Eh, nakikita ko yun sa Facebook. Eh. May pa ganun-ganun daw. Kasi ito yung katawan ni si, ano. Yan yung katawan daw ni Celine Dion. Tapos may dalawang double bond O daw doon. Anyway, uh, para lang ma... Kung naunawa nyo na yung meme, edi good, no? Pero pag hindi pa, ito yung meaning nun, Celine Dion daw. Dalawang ketone. Okay, so anyway, let's go here, no? Uh, draw the condensed structural formula for the two aldehydes. Aldehydes. Actually, hindi siya aldehyde, no? Typo to. 
uh, two carbonyl groups. Uh. Uh, hindi yan aldehyde, uh, typo lang. Kamali. So, draw the condensed structural formula for the two carbonyl group. No? That means pwede yung aldehyde, pwede yung ketone with the molecular formula C4H8O. No? So, kailangan may C double bond O dito. So, gagawin mo, mag-pull out ka na ng carbon and oxygen. So, pull out mo na yan dyan sa formula mo. C3, H8 na. So, ayan. So, ito na lang gawan mo ng backbone. Tapos, ito, idudugtong mo na lang. Na? So, ganun lang. I-pull out mo na yung, yung functional group from the formula. Okay? So, connect ko yung tatlong carbons. Pwede yung C double bond O, lagay ko sa dulo. Okay? Ayan. So, I have here my carbonyl group. Tapos, lagyan ko na lang ng hydrogen. No? So, I have 8 hydrogens to distribute. 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. No? So, this is aldehyde. Ito, aldehyde to. Kasi, I have C double bond O. That was my H. No? So, this is aldehyde. O, paano naman kapag gusto ko ng ketone? So, pag ketone yan, yung C double bond O mo, ilalagay mo sa gitna. Lagay mo siya sa gitna. So, diba? May tatlong carbon chain ka. O, lagay mo yung C double bond O sa gitna. No? Ayan. O, pwede rin naman dito. Same-same lang din yun as this one. No? Pag pinag-flip mo yan, same lang yan. Okay. Ay, hindi na pala pwede dun. Oops. Then, i-distribute mo yung hydrogens mo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No? So, yan. We have the same formula, same number of atoms, but different connectivities. So, this one is aldehyde kasi yung nakadugtong sa carbonyl ay hydrogen. Aldehyde yan. This one is ketone. Bakit? No? Kasi yung nakadugtong dito ay dalawang carbon groups. No? So, ketone yan. Okay. Uh, paano yung condensed formula niyan? Uh, ganun lang din. Parang ginagawa natin kanina. Uh, let's draw the condensed formula. Start from the leftmost. No? So, that's CH3. CH2. Ano ka sunod? CH2. Then, for aldehyde, we can write that as CO. No? So, yan. CO. Ayan. Aldehyde. Pwede rin naman na ilagay mo yung double bond, no? Pwede yung isulat mo yan as ganito. Uh, pwede rin yan. Pwede rin ganyan, no? Although pwede rin naman to. Okay? So, lahat naman pwede, no? Basta tama. Okay, that's the structural formula for the aldehyde. For this ketone, ano kaya yung pwede gawin structural formula? Start from the leftmost, no? So, that's CH2, CO, okay? Then, CH3. Pwede rin naman yan na CH3, CH2, C, double bond O, CH3. Okay, kayo mamili, no? Pwede itong nasa taas, pwede itong nasa baba. Kahit alin dyan ay tama, no? Pwede rin naman itong structure, no? Okay, so, yan lang yung ating mga sagot dyan, no? So, that's for aldehydes and ketones, no? Uh, next one, we have carboxylic acid. So, pag carboxylic acid, may C double bond O yan, no? Yan, may C double bond O. May carbonyl group pa rin, no? OH, may alcohol, no? Kaya nga tawag dyan ay carboxylic acid, no? The carbo, meaning yun ay carbonyl. Oxyl, or silic, yun ay for OH, no? So, pinagsama yung carbonyl and car hydroxyl or OH groups, no? So, yan yung ating formula. C double bond O, OH. Uh, draw the structure of a single carboxylic acid with the formula of that. So, anong gagawin nyo dito? Uh, sabi dyan, carboxylic acid. Edi, i-pull out muna yung carboxylic group. Ano yung carboxylic group? COOH. So, i-subtract muna yun sa formula mo. So, ano yung matitira? C2 
H5. Tapos wala ng aux dyan. So, gawa ka na ng backbone, C2H5. So, dalawang carbon. Kasi dugtong mo na yung COOH, no? Matic yun. Kasi kapag you have a carboxylic group, ganito lang yung itsura ng agad. Matic, no? Tapos ilagay mo na lang yung limang hydrogen sa kung saan man pwede siya dumugtong. Okay. So, this is the structure of the carboxylic acid with the formula C3H6O2. Ano uli ginagawa? I-pull out mo na yung functional group from the formula. Kailangan kabisado nyo yung ito. I-pull out nyo na yan. Tapos yung natira, doon ka gumawa ng skeleton. Doon ka gumawa ng backbone. No? Kasi dugtong mo na lang yung R group mo. Okay? So, ganun lang. Uh, paano pala yung condensed structural formula niya? No? Start from the left. CH3, CH2, and COOH. Oh, Pwede ganyan. Pwede yan yung kanyang condensed structural formula. Pwede rin naman na CH3, CH2, C double bond O, OH. Pwede rin yan. Pwede rin naman na CH3, CH2, C, O2, H. Okay? So, anong ginawa dito sa O2? Pinagsama lang yung dalawang oxygen. Uh, pwede yan. Uh, marami siyang version. Pwede yung CH3, CH2, COOH. CH3, CH2, C double bond O, OH. Pwede rin naman CH3, CH2, C, O2, H. Okay? As long as you know kung anong functional group meron, kailangan alam nyo na yung uh, magiging itsura ng formula niya. Ang carboxylic esters naman. So, similar with carboxylic acids. No? Ang carboxylic ester ay may carbonyl group. No? May C double bond O. However, instead of having hydrogen connected to the oxygen, you have your carbon. No? Kaya ang tawag ko dyan kanina ay R core. No? So, you have your functional group here. You have your double bond O here. Tapos may carbon group ka uli sa dulo. No? So, yan. So, this is the structure of your carboxylic ester. Instead na hydrogen yan, naging carbon. Kasi kapag ito ay hydrogen, this will be a carboxylic acid. No? Pero since ito ay carbon, uh, yan ay carboxylic ester. No? So, nakikita yung mga esters sa mantika. No? So, maraming ganyan sa mantika. No? Malalaman natin yan in the future. No? Next one, carboxylic amides or amide. No? So, amide is similar with carboxylic acid. May C double bond O pa rin. However, instead of having OH, meron tayong NH. No? So, since nitrogen yan, pwede ulit tayo magkaroon ng primary, secondary, or tertiary amide. No? So, depending on the number of hydrogens connected to the nitrogen, you can have primary, secondary, or tertiary amide. So, let's have this acetamide. So, may dalawang hydrogen connected to the nitrogen. So, that is primary. And methyl acetamide. So, may isang hydrogen connected to nitrogen. So, that is secondary. Dito naman, on the NN dimethyl formide, formamide, no? So, walang hydrogen connected to that. So, that's tertiary. Yung naming, malalaman nyo yan in the future. No? So, nothing to worry muna about that. Okay? So, I think that's all for today muna. No? So, yun na muna yung ating i-discuss today. So, ano yung na-cover natin? So, we are able to check on the history of organic chemistry. Tapos, nalaman din natin yung structural theory. Ano yung sinasabi ng structural theory? Sabi doon na yung valency ng atom ay fixed na. No? Uh, hindi naman usually fixed na, no? pero generally fixed na. No? So, in the, pwedeng may tetravalency, tetravalent, may trivalent, divalent, monovalent na. No? And with the idea of monovalency, divalency, trivalency, and tetravalency, you can have different connections ng atoms na. No? If they have the same formula, then you have isomers na. No? Tapos, there are certain groups no, ng atoms that can function as one. We call them the functional groups. No? And yung mga functional groups, may kanya-kanya silang properties. For this semester, ang malalaman natin ng mga functional groups ay mga ito. 
Ito, iisa-isahin natin yan until December. Okay? So, yan, madali lang naman yan, na. So, basta yung ganun lang, na. Okay? Ayun lang. Tapos yan, inalam natin yung mga ganito ganyan, no? So, yan. Mga primary, secondary, tertiary, so on and so forth, no? So, everything is left for you to practice na na. Next meeting, we will continue the concept of organic chemistry, no? Paano ba naging, paano ba nagkaroon ng org chem talaga, no? Kasi naputol yung kwento natin, di ba? Ang alam natin, si Friedrich Wuller nagawa niya to. Na, nagawa niya yung synthesis ng organic compound from inorganic compound tapos org chem na agad not really no so meron pa yung mga pre, uh, precursors no bago tayo magkaroon ng organic compounds no so anyway ito ay mga concept lang naman ng chemical bonding no si so, mga molecular geometry malalaman din natin dito so yan so in the future na lang next week no alamin natin yan and how are bonds formed no Ayan. So, malalaman natin lahat ng mga yan in the future. So, anyway, so that's all for today lang. Uh, and I wish you all the best. Kasi mag-exam pa kayo kay Sir Mac mamaya. Na. So, galingan nyo po. Na. So, kung naka-perfect kayo sa akin, i-perfect eh, nyo rin kay Sir Mac. Na. So, ayan. So, again, your grades are temporary. Uh, I mean... Ayan. So, yung mga grades nyo na yan, that's temporary. So, hindi porket mababa ka dyan, eh, mababa ka na sa finals, no? No, kasi kapag napaperfect mo yung mga exam dito sa finals, eh, di mas lalong mataas yung chances na pasado kayo sa, mas mataas yung grade nyo, rather, no? Kasi mapasado naman kayo, eh. Wala namang babagsakata, eh. Oo, wala. Basta yan, ha? So, anyway, congratulations ulit sa mga naka-perfect, no? And for those na hindi naman naka-perfect, congratulations pa rin, no? Kasi, uh, nagawa nyo yung task ninyo despite na online learning tayo na so yan so medyo masaya naman ako sa result ng exams natin na so anyway so yun lang naman yung mga kwento ko and the recording of this class will be uploaded on youtube na lang no so yun sa mga hindi naka-attend sabihin nyo na lang recorded siya na no? upload ko mamaya okay so yun lang and i'll see you again next week no so galingan nyo na lang po muna and try to study all this material no by the way naka-upload to sa discussion sa canvas pupunta lang kayo dito sa canvas ayan discussions tagal mag-load ah okay pa ba yan ayun may pupunta lang kayo diyan tapos ito mt 21. 21 kayo, di ba? Download nyo na lang yung PDF, no? By the way, yung lesson dito kasi is naka-video, no? Naka-video siya instead of PowerPoint. You can watch this, no? Si Sir Mac gumawa naman na itong video na to. Ang bosses niya yung nandyan. So, ito yung PDF na ginamit ko. I mean, ito yung PowerPoint na ginamit ko. Ah, sige lang po. Sige, Zylene. Na yung name mo, organic compound, ah. Xylene. Xylene, toluene. Ah, sige, ano po yung question mo? Nasa PM ba? Or dito na lang sa GC? Yung question po na non-polar covalent bond, chuchu. Ah, yung sa ano yan. Ah, kung na-oversight nyo, yung sa polarity ng bond, depending on the electronegativity difference yun. Mm -hmm. Dapat ganun ginawa niya. <laughs> Kasi ganun ginawa namin dun eh. Uh, SEBR. Sagot ko. Kasi na, uh, check ko yan mamaya. No? So yung mga correction kasi uh, iniisa-isa ko pa. No? Medyo naduduling pa ako kaya medyo matagal ako. No? Pero sige, I'll check your answers. No? Okay, so yun lang. Uh, message mo na lang ako mamaya para makita ka. Okay, so yun lang. I'll see you again next time and ingat parate na no? stay safe and wag mo na lalabas kahit pwede na lumabas yung 18 years old na so kita-kita na lang tayo sa susunod na no? stay safe and bye-bye